Hey folks, I want to show you how to rebuild your Fox 2.0 air shocks. So here's a shock that I have. It's the 4 inch travel shock. And I'm just finding that the valving is just a little bit too stiff for my ATV. So I want to take the shims out and put in something that's going to be a little bit softer for me. So these are the tools I'm going to be using for this. I have these, uh, basically these vice clamps that I built. And I'm just going to be putting some plastic in there. To protect the shock body and then we'll clamp that in and I just have an assortment of uh, just a little tools here to release the pressure out and pull some snap rings out make sure you're wearing your eye protection because these things are under very high pressure no you don't want to get this stuff in your eye okay let's start taking this apart okay the very first thing we need to do is release the nitrogen pressure out of the shock and drain the bulk of the oil out just so it's not as messy of a job for us. All right, so just take off this cap. Okay, and you just, <clears throat> it's just like a bicycle or air valve or a, you know, a tire air valve. Just wanna very carefully, very slowly start releasing some of this nitrogen pressure. Mm. Now you can see there's some of the oil is, is shooting out already. Not a lot in there, but it is high pressure. Okay, so now we got that out, and what I'm going to do is try and push some of the oil out. Oh yeah, that's probably pretty good. Okay, next thing we do, we need to get this clamped in the vise so we can pop this top uh, retainer clip off. And that's going to allow us to get access to the internals of the shock. Now, you want to clamp it securely, but don't, don't too crazy with this. You don't want to damage the shock body itself. Okay, the next thing we need to do is to knock this retaining clip off. Um, now you'll notice there's um, some edges in here where we can get our, our screwdriver in or our punch. So what I've done is I've taken a punch and I've just put some black tape on here because I don't want to I want to try not to damage the uh, the ring. Okay, so I'll get my hammer and we'll try and tap that out. There we go. Okay, so that knocks that retaining clip off. Now, the next thing we need to do is take the snap ring off the inside. Okay, in order to get access to that snap ring, um, it's, it's kind of hard to see, but there's, there's a, a seal that's in here, and we just have to knock it down just a little bit. So again, take your punch, and ever so carefully, just want to move it down some. Don't put it on the uh, the rubber seal that's in there. The last thing you want to do is start damaging your seal. There we go. So I moved it down about a quarter of an inch. Now you just want to take a, a little screwdriver or a pick and pop that snap ring out. Okay, there we go. You can see it coming out. Perfect. Okay, just move that out of the way. Now we'll be able to remove the, <clears throat> basically the shaft from the shock body itself.
There you go. You need to um, open the valve at the other end just to release the suction that's in there and then pull on it. There we go. Okay. There you have it. So that's how you disassemble it. Now what I'm going to show you how to do is to revalve this thing. Okay, now that we have the internals of the shock out, what we need to do is to start disassembling the shim valve stack. So start by taking this wear band off. And then you'll need a three quarter inch socket or wrench to take this nut off the end. Now, be very careful doing this because we want to make sure these come out in the correct order so we know where they came from. So, very carefully, start to slide this off. And just kind of grab it with your fingers and we're going to lay it out exactly like it came off. Okay, perfect. Everything's off, we got it in the correct order. Now the next thing we want to do is to measure our shims just so we know exactly what we have and that way there we can figure out the new ones that we'd like to order so we can revalve this. Okay, at this point you're going to need um, some kind of a measurement tool. Now it's two different styles, you can use one of these uh, vernier calipers um, or if you have a micrometer these will work as well. In fact, I prefer, prefer using the micrometer just because they're a bit more accurate than uh, these guys. So I'm going to measure the shims that I have, mark them all down. Okay, we've got all our measurements. Now what we want to do is go over to the Fox website, um, go over to the section where it's going to show us the, the different valving numbers and the different shim sizes. Figure out what size you want, you know, make it softer, make it a bit harder, and then we can start reassembling them with our new valves. Okay, reassembling um, exactly the same as disassembling, only in the reverse order, obviously. Just go ahead and make sure all your parts are nice and clean. Okay, so start with the start with the spring. Then it was this big washer. This shim stack went on. Okay, so we take our new shim stack. Get this in the correct orientation, that's very important. Put the top shim stack on. Okay, there's these two spacer washers. Get the retaining nut. Let's torque that thing down. Make sure it's on good, you don't want your shocks flying apart. Okay, put our wear band back on. Take your shock body. Add a bit of a wipe too. Take the oil that you took out. Now to do this correctly, you really should measure this out first to make sure you have the correct amount of oil. And if it's starting to, you know, if it's time to change your oil, you obviously want to get new stuff. But for now, I'm just going to put this back in. Okay, now slide this in. Now make sure this retaining, make sure that snap rings out. Now. Get that seal collar back down in there. Oh, now this might require a little bit of effort. There we go, that seems to be working. Oh, nope, maybe not. Might have to take some of that pressure out again. Now it's still not quite down far enough, so we'll need to mount that back in the vise and give it a bit of a tap there.
you just need to get it down far enough, far enough so you can clear that uh, round retaining ring clip. Don't think I have it down quite far enough yet. There we go. Okay, push your retaining ring back in. Now make sure it snaps in. Okay, we're gonna test it and make sure it's in. We're just gonna gently pull this back and pull that collar back up. And that way there, we'll know it's in the correct spot. We'll just rotate this around. Okay, check that now. Yeah, I can look down in there. I can see that ring is properly set. Perfect. Now, we just gently tap this guy back in. Okay, there you have it, folks. That's how you revolve your Fox shock. Now, obviously, you'll need to take this to somebody to uh, fill it up with the correct amount of nitrogen pressure. But it's as simple as that. Something you could probably do by yourself. Well, I hope you enjoyed this video. And uh, thanks for watching, folks.